Well, the big news in the world right now is the Twitter takeover by Elon Musk. And a lot of people are reacting very strongly, very negatively to this. And uh, But I think what this does is it presents new opportunities for Christians uh, to preach the gospel and give Bible truth. And I'm going to give you my take on this here in just a moment. Don't go away. All right, guys, thank you for watching today's video. Please go ahead and smite that like button, and all your dreams will come true. And if you don't, then your transmission will go out in your car. And we do not want that for you because we love you. And so go ahead and hit your like button, and it helps us go farther into the YouTube algorithm. And then also, if you're new, subscribe to our channel as well. Um, I want to tell you a little story real quick before we get into the into the thought of this video. Um, one of the I've been in the ministry full-time over 15 years now, and the Lord is blessed, and I, I, I would not have done anything different, really, as far as that goes. Um, I'm thankful that God called me to preach. I was glad that God called me to preach and and, and just thrilled to, to be in the ministry all these years, and it's been a blessing. So, uh, But one of the things that was a blessing and to some people was a curse uh, was the success of my YouTube channel. I mean, we get almost a million views a month on our channel, and the Lord really has blessed it, and I'm thankful for that. And I asked the Lord, too, because I wanted to use it for his glory and for 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 good, really. And and God has honored that, and I think he's blessed it. Um, but one of the things that I was I was shocked when I when my YouTube channel took off and, and the Lord just just gave us unbelievably exceedingly abundantly above all we could all that we could ask or think uh, I had people coming at me saying uh, we're not paying you for that and these were supporting pastors these men that supported our ministry and uh, they they weren't bad men but they just they in their mind they had it that social media was not somehow a part of what a missionary or somebody in the ministry should be a part of and and uh, you know I I I be honest with you, I was grieved about that because these were good men that were telling me this, but uh, I had to kind of evaluate my own heart and check it out. But here, here's what I told a guy. I said this. I said, let me ask you a question. If you knew, This was a supporting pastor. I said, um, let's just say that, oh, Fox News called you and said, we're going to give you 20 minutes every night of the week, and you can use the platform here, and you can say anything you want for 20 minutes. And I asked him, I said, would you take that chance, being that you're a pastor or whatever? Um, you know, I know you, you're, you've got your responsibilities, you've got things that you're doing, but if you had that opportunity to have that many people look at you and, and hear what you had to say about God and the Bible, would you take that opportunity? And I said, before you answer, before you answer, if you say no, you're lying. If you say no, you're a liar. And uh, the conversation didn't go very, real well. But I don't care. I don't care because it, it, he he didn't say no to that. He talked in circles and, and realized that I had a point. But it's funny how when a man makes up his mind, facts don't matter anymore, of course. So, you know, of course, that, that supporter dropped me, and uh, that's, that's, you know, that's just how it is. The Lord knows. I made this post the other day about the golden handcuffs of missionaries. And um, here, let me just read you just a little bit of this post, if I can do so. And let me move my hit the join button to this channel button right there. Uh, Over the years working in Kenya, I learned much about the challenges that our African pastors face in ministry. They taught me that one of my biggest problems in the, is the infiltration of the charismatic movement in an attempt to make myself useful in missions. I began to study this theory theological issue, which inevitably resulted in me speaking out against it through the pulpit ministry and various social media posts. Not long after that, I had a supporting pastor reach out to me with concern that I was being sidetracked from missions by articulating the theological dangers of uh, the charismatic doctrines. And when I'd asked for further explanation, he said, we are not supporting you to do that. And, uh, and so I said, I, I, he also said that I should leave all that alone and just plant churches. I respectfully asked if apologetics was something that he did not want me involved in. And his answer was, just go do missions and don't waste your time with that stuff. Uh, I politely told him that missions is more than just planting churches and seeing people saved. It is the work of making disciples, which involves bringing people to maturity in their faith. What good would it be to plant 100 churches and have them all subverted by doc- by Satan because of the lack of doctrinal stability? Uh, this particular pastor ended up dropping our financial support, and I was somewhat perplexed by it. 
Uh, what do these men think should happen in the work of missions? Should missionaries only preach the gospel? Should they only hand out gospel tracts? Should they never speak about any other theological topic for fear of losing financial support? Uh, should they uh, never teach Baptist distinctives? Should they never warn their people of the dangers of bad doctrines? Are missionaries only allowed to preach the gospel? And I said, I cannot speak for everybody, but I'm going to preach the whole counsel of God. And, uh, and to do my best to make disciples, I will use whatever influence the Lord gives me to point people to the truth and admonish them to walk in it themselves. I will speak whatever I feel that the Lord wants me to speak about without fear of losing support. It is time that we take the golden handcuffs off the missionaries and let them loose upon the world. Missionaries are preachers too and should be encouraged to preach. When we see a missionary standing against sin and wickedness, we should cheer him on, not question if he's sidetracked or doing something we're not supposed him to do. Let them do the work of an evangelist and earnestly contend for the faith. Let the missionaries do what they need to do to build their people. Let these men speak about what the Lord leads them to speak about. Take these golden handcuffs off these men and set them loose upon the world. Let them be named among those that have, quote, turned the world upside down, Acts 17, 6. And guys, I, I believe, uh, you know, I, I believe social media is a it's, it really hasn't made the world a better place. I think social media has amplified some toxic natures in our society. Uh, now, you know, I, I think Jordan Peterson is one of the guys who has so wonderfully articulated it. Um, you know, you have somebody who's an expert in a certain field and who has proven a lifelong expertise and uh, and productivity in a certain field. And now social media has amplified the voices of people who are not experts in certain fields and has given them just a powerful voice <laughs> as people uh, who, you know, basically they're, they're undeserving uh, of the authority authority that they've been given and the influence they've been given on certain topics. And so there's, there's problematic aspects to social media, no doubt. Uh, but here's the thing that social media is. Social media should be viewed by all Christians as a pulpit to the world. This is your chance to speak, and this is your chance to be heard. And so you should speak the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, my point being here is that uh, Twitter has had a remarkable shakeup nowadays. I mean, this this is unbelievable what is going on. And, um, and so Elon Musk has purchased the platform. And if you didn't understand Twitter before, let me just give you a quick rundown on it. Twitter was a left-wing prison. I mean, it was just like you, you could not say anything that violated uh, the most basic left-wing tenets. I mean, you, you, you couldn't have an opinion about a lot of stuff. Um, and and, and I, I, mean, I really think all these social media platforms are slanted to the left. The one that I've had the most trouble with was Facebook. I have been in Facebook jail for, I mean, I, I made a post. Um, Clem, the University of Clemson lost a football game. Okay, and I posted just jokingly on my Facebook page, Clemson Mama Ugly. Clemson Mama Ugly. And Clemson Mama is ugly. <laughs> so, And, I, of course, I was joking. I was joking. 30-day suspension from Facebook. And th- th- there's nobody to call. There's no appeal to make. It's just a bot. And they, they just... They just they just throw you off the platform. Uh, there was another time that I got suspended for like 48 hours because a friend of mine were joking back and forth, and I just happened to say in the comments that I'll stab you, which is an inside joke that I've had with that friend for a very long time. And, uh, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't threatening violence on the guy. It was, just, it was just a it was friendly banter between two guy friends, and we always say stuff like that all the time to each other. It was hilarious. It was funny. And then I got like 48 hours suspension for it because Facebook is trash. <laughs> I hate Facebook, that thing. I'm on it and I use it, but uh, the user interface is no good. It's just it's just not a not a blessing. But Twitter is now going to change everything. There's talks now about bringing back Vine, which I'm for that. Bring back Vine and please destroy TikTok. Oh my goodness, destroy this terrible thing called TikTok. And uh, and and Elon Musk is is planning on doing a couple things. He's planning on paying creators. Uh, he's planning on opening up the algorithm so that uh, it's not as left leaning as it was because it was ridiculous. And then he's also wanting to uh, remove the bots off the platform by making everybody verify their accounts. And there's a lot of debate going back and forth on that and whatever. Uh, The point being is Christians need to see this as an opportunity that has now opened up to preach the gospel freely and to speak freely about certain social issues on this platform now. There are millions of people on Twitter, and and this is like a a pulpit to the world. Now, 
Uh, this is, of course, is our Twitter account. I mean, if you get on there, I want, I want to encourage you, get on there and follow us. I'm at, at Ro Spencer. You can find me on there. There is my, my profile bio. Go check us out on there. But Twitter is now opened up. I mean, the bird has been freed, baby. And I want to encourage God's people to, to you know, if you don't want to use social media, that's no problem. I mean, there, I don't I don't know if you can make a biblical case for or against it. I mean, there's some guys that when Facebook came out, uh, some Baptist preachers that they just laughably doubled and tripled down, quadrupled down against Facebook usage. And now they're on Facebook themselves, a bunch of hypocrites. And, and really what that was was a bunch of men who didn't know what they were talking about who just ran their mouth too much and whatever. Um, they didn't understand the, the, the opportunity that was given them, but here's my Twitter account. Go follow me on there and let, let's start preaching the gospel. Let's start sharing Bible truth. Uh, you know, I, I, my YouTube channel is technically, uh, uh, social media and I've, I've been able to reach millions with this channel. So, so with, with, with these new technologies, there comes new pitfalls. Of course, we all understand that, but there also comes new opportunities, and I think God's people need to use these opportunities for his glory. And, uh, you know, you can get on Twitter, and and, uh, and I posted that, and then probably shouldn't show that on YouTube, but whatever. And uh, But there there's a lot of conversation that could be had on here, and there are a lot of things that we can say now. And, uh, and look, guys, I understand Elon Musk is probably an, an occultist. He's probably into all kinds of weird stuff, and I get that. But at least he's trying to open up the speech barriers. He's at least letting us talk now. And we need to take that opportunity as God's people. That's what I want to tell you today. That's what I want to challenge you as. Take every opportunity you have to preach the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world. And uh, follow us on Twitter if you can. That would be great. And uh, we'd love to see you on there. So, guys, we love you. Thank you for this video today. Thank you for talking to us and taking the time to be with us. We love you all. And uh, have a great day. We will see you guys very, very soon. Well, guys, if you're like me, you are sick of all this corporate media completely lying to you every day. You don't even know what's going on. All you're getting is propaganda. You're not getting real news. And so with that in mind, we created thirdadam.com your trusted source for fundamental Baptist news. We have assembled a team of great researchers and writers that can give you good biblical worldview takes on current events. Please bookmark this website and go there every day. We post all the time. So go visit today, thirdadam.com, 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 your trusted source for fundamental Baptist news. Hey guys, Spencer here. I've got a great, exciting new book for you guys that you're going to absolutely love. Introducing the Doctrine Matters Bible Study Journal. This is a great tool that we put together for you guys that you can help deepen your understanding of the Word of God. In this book, we put several very helpful quotes about studying the Bible. We've even put a few charts in there about a bird's eye view of the Bible. And then we've even listed Bible verses by topic. Several of these topics include what does the Bible say about the Bible? What does the Bible say about Jesus Christ? What does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit, the church, witnessing, and even prayer, salvation, and other issues like that? Uh, man, this is going to be a great help to you. You're going to love this tool. We even put a section in this book on how to study the Bible, a little guide we put together for you guys just to give you some pointers and some tips in your own personal Bible study. And the rest of the book is line pages for your own personal journaling. You can put in there the things that God has spoken to you about, some of the things that you've seen from the Word of God, and you have the tool now to document all that yourself. And I'm sure this thing will be a great blessing to you. It is available now on Amazon. There's a link in the description of this video. And I, folks, I know, I know that you will love this. So get one for yourself, for your family, for a friend, and it'll be a great blessing to you. Remember, Doctrine Matters Bible Study Journal, now available on Amazon, and we know that you will absolutely love it. God bless you, friend, and remember, Doctrine Matters. And don't you forget it either. <laughs> God bless you, friend.